Hi everyone, it's Chelsea from the ZZB My Lethal Library and I'm here with Fran. And today we're going to be talking to you about our vegan, vegetarian, plant-based lifestyles. We're going to be sharing our experiences and giving you tips on how to get started and things that we've learned thus far. We're going to be sharing with you some of our favorite books, podcasts, um, anything that deals with learning more about this kind of lifestyle. We're going to be sharing our favorite beauty products or our favorite restaurants. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. Okay. Alright, so why don't we start by talking about, first off, what is vegetarianism or veganism or a plant-based lifestyle? So, vegetarianism refers to um, the lifestyle practice of abstaining from the consumption of meat. Um, whereas veganism um, involves the practice of abstaining from the consumption of meat, but also um, any animal byproducts. Um, so that would be um, anything uh, such as eggs or honey or um, something like that, you know, milk um, so it's processed uh, and has milk in it. Um, and uh, it also refers to um, not just food or diet, uh, but in the products uh, that you use, like clothing that you wear or um, personal care, cosmetics products. Then there is plant-based, and with plant-based, there is an emphasis on consuming um, whole foods, meaning foods that are uh, not processed or that are minimally processed. Uh, but you can be plant-based and not be vegetarian um, or vegan. So you can still eat meat. Mm -hmm. You can plant-based. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I would just emphasize that, that all of these are um, lifestyles, so they're beyond just the actual food that you're eating, but holistically how do you um, live your life, what do you um, consume and eat day to day. Okay, so now we're going to talk to you a bit about our experiences and how we got here. Um, so I'm vegetarian, have been for a few years. Um, I started because I, I first uh, learned about um, animal rights and the uh, the process of what, what goes into um, animal agriculture um, uh, and how it's produced and um, looking at how much harm is caused to um, the actual animals, um, you know, even beyond them being slaughtered, the way that they're uh, kept in, in confined um, spaces and in really inhumane um, conditions. Um, and it's something that's you know, throughout uh, the animal um, production uh, industry. Um, in addition to that, the people who uh, work in slaughterhouses or the like are um, subjected to um, very dangerous working conditions. Mm -hmm. um, it is, you know, dangerous having to slaughter the animals, but also looking at like the chemicals they use to clean um, the spaces uh, where the animals are, um, and um, so it's, it's harmful to the animals, harmful to the people, also harmful to. Um, the environment. Um, we have far more um, animals, uh, domesticated animals, produced for consumption now than would normally be in the environment um, otherwise. And they produce um, a lot of gases just from simply breathing, but also from the manure that they produce. Um, so it, it all um, ties into you know impacting us in addition to the personal um, health benefits of um, you know just healthier to eat a um, the whole food um, you know a diet um, that um, consists mostly of plants and plant-based foods versus um, animal foods. Um, so I'm in it for the animals, for the people, for the environment, for everything. Um, and for me, it's about more um, than just personal um, purity, but for me to try to live as um, ethically and compassionately as I can. Very well said. Um, let's see, my experience started, I, I'm in it for pretty much the same reasons as Bree said, for the environment, for my health, for the animals, as you can see by my shirt. Um, I'd say my experience, it started at a pretty young age, starting to, I've always really loved animals. I remember in middle school asking my mom, can I go vegetarian? And she was like, nope and so it just kind of ended there i never really thought about it much after that I, it was still something i was like oh man i really wish i could go 
vegetarian, but um, as a child and not really being able to make those decisions for myself, um, that was a little bit harder. And so in 2017, I actually moved out of my parents' house with my best friend. And that was when I started looking more into different kinds of eating. Um, I started to look more into vegetarianism. I was like, oh, I could never go vegan. Um, and so I would go through phases of going kind of back and forth between eating meat, not eating meat. Um, there would be months that I wouldn't eat meat and then there's months that I did eat meat. Um, but it, it's, it never really stuck. There was always, I don't know, it was just kind of a stumbling block, I guess, of uh, kind of not knowing, I guess, what my purpose was. Um, but in August 2019, I visited an animal sanctuary for the first time. It was a nonprofit in Oklahoma. They had a camping night. Um, they're called Oliver and Farms, Oliver and Friends Animal Sanctuary. Yeah, they're in Oklahoma. You should check them out. They are really, really amazing and they treat their animals uh, so wonderfully. Um, but I got to learn more about the animals and the, all of their stories, all of the animals that are there, they all had their own stories, where they came from, um, the, the abuse that they went through. And um, so it was just very um, eye-opening. Mm -hmm. And that was when I was like, okay, I need to get more serious about it. Um, I am vegan. I didn't say that at first. I'm, I'm vegan. I've been vegan for seven months. But um, even after I went to that animal sanctuary, there were still periods of going back and forth. I think there were so many times where I actually told Bri, I was like, yep, I'm trying to go vegan again. And then there'd be times when I, I would just start back to eating meat again. So, um, but in June of 2020, uh, I really, really buckled down. Um, and I think June 1st, I just decided, I was like, nope, no more meat, no more dairy. I'm already lactose intolerant. So mm -hmm. the dairy side of it was a lot more easier for me to give up. Um, which is funny because I look back a few years ago, I was like, I would never be able to go vegan, but um, it's been seven months so far and so far so good. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my story. I think I'm still learning and there's still um, a lot of things that you come across that you're like, oh, that's not vegan. Like I'm gonna cut this, mm -hmm. cut this out. So um, that's my story. Yeah, and I, I think it's um, important that you mentioned the fact that it, it wasn't an um, immediate um, thing that you just did, like, oh, I'm cutting off everything. You do the, like, going back and forth. Um, I certainly did that where I would, you know, be vegetarian for a while, then yes. eat some meat, and then kind of go back. Um, so, you know, if you are um, planning to, to uh, follow this lifestyle and want to get on it, certainly extend grace to yourself. Um, don't expect um, for you to be able to make, um, you know, this big lifestyle change um, quickly. Um, and, you know, if, if you don't and you take your time and you struggle, mm -hmm. it's, it's okay. Um, so I'm still in that place of like, I'm working my way towards vegan, um, but you know, I'm not all the way there. Um, so it's definitely understanding. And every little bit helps too. Mm -hmm. Even if you're just doing meatless Mondays, a lot of people do meatless Mondays in yeah. January. Also, it's otherwise known as veganuary. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, even if you're just doing a little bit at a time, um, you know, any anything helps, you know, mm -hmm. really, if everybody's kind of doing their part to yeah. their, you know, um, capabilities. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And next, we will move on to our biggest tips. So I have only been vegan, as I said before, for about seven months, but I still have some tips for anyone um, that is either struggling to go vegan or maybe you're just being curious. If you're like me, maybe you had a lot of periods where it was stop and go. Uh, but my biggest tip, and I learned this from the joyful vegan, her name is Colleen, uh, is that veganism is a journey, not a destination. Mm -hmm. I think when I first started going towards vegan it, it was like after a few weeks or a couple of months i was like oh i'm vegan and then it it was kind of like oh what's next though um so i think remembering that this it's not it's not a destination it's a journey 
and um, you shouldn't try and be perfect. Um, you just have to try your best. Um, a good example of this is that just this week, I went into my medicine cabinet and I was reaching for the ibuprofen and it was in these gel capsules and I'm looking at it and I, it just like clicked in my mind. There were so many times over these last several months where I went and I, I had those ibuprofen gel capsules for my headache and I was looking at it and I was like, it's in a gel capsule. I was like, I wonder what that's made out of. And so I'm looking on the back and it was made out of gelatin. Does me having had those ibuprofens over these last seven months when I was trying to be vegan negate any of the work that I had already put in or does it make me any less vegan? No, it was an accident. Um, I was not too hard on myself. My husband kind of teased me about it. Um, but uh, so yeah, I was like, okay, now I know like I just it just didn't click I was mm -hmm. like it makes me a little bit more mindful um but I wasn't hard on myself I was like I'm still vegan <laughs> it didn't just magically go away um it's just a learning curve yeah. um and so if you don't know um gelatin is made from animal cartilage yeah um yeah so that's what the, the gel capsules and the, the medicine yeah Yes. Yeah, I've had a few things like that, and it's like, oh, I've, you know, eliminated so many things, and then I look up one day, and I'm like, oh, wait, no, that's actually made from something with animal product. Yeah. Because they're ubiquitous, you know, mm -hmm. so that's just, that's going to happen. Yeah, um, and then another tip that I have is always be learning. Um, you know, it didn't just stop with visiting that one animal sanctuary. Um, you have to kind of always either be reading some kind of book or listening to a podcast or watching a documentary um, just keep learning because you'll you'll learn about not only like the the I guess more philosophy behind veganism um, you'll also hear a lot of people's experiences too um, so one of my goals for this year was every month either watch something read something listen to something that pertains to my lifestyle um, so that i'm not um, being stagnant i guess so that i'm constantly evolving and learning more and it kind of helps add to your why too so whenever you get asked that question of why are you vegan you can give them an answer yeah, and it's not a, a chore. Yeah. Like, oh, I have to go do all this research. It's actually interesting learning, mm -hmm. and, you know, especially hearing people's stories. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, for my tips, um, my first one is to go slowly um, with your transition. Uh, you know, start with some easy, um, simple substitutions uh, that will allow you to still. Um, consume or do the things that are familiar to you because if you try to move too fast then it probably won't stick that's just the way that habits are um, and it'll be easier uh, for you to make the change if you're still able to do many of the things that that you like or consume the things that you like so for example um, if you're you know trying to uh, go move towards vegan um, make a meal like spaghetti I think most people will eat spaghetti, mm -hmm. um, but that's a simple one that you can replace the meat with uh, a vegan meat substitute. Um, and if you're, you know, making your um, vegetables to go along with it instead of using um, butter um, made from uh, cow's milk, you use some vegan butter. Um, and um, so, you know, those are easy things to do, and that the food will still taste. Um, virtually the same mm -hmm. um, and um, along the lines of moving slowly like as you are uh, running out of, of projects uh, products in your um, refrigerator your your pantry look for the vegan substitutes and um, replace them so when you run out of milk get um, you know a dairy-free milk um, you run out of butter get a vegan butter um, and in that way you, you slowly make those changes and you know, a few months down the line, then you'll see like, oh, look at all these things that I've, you know, replaced and, um, and changed over. So it'll, it'll feel a lot easier if you do it um, that way. 
And I would also say, don't be afraid to try new things, um, whether it's uh, food or personal care products or trying a new uh, brand for um, clothing, um, whatever it is. Um, as with anything, some things you're gonna like and some things um, you're not going to, it's just all a part of the process. Um, but don't be afraid to, to try and um, branch out. I think one of the things that we hear about um, veganism or moving to plant-based is that you don't have as many options um, mm -hmm. for things. And um, I, you know, when you first start it, it may feel that way because all of the regular places that you go, regular things that you consume, you're like, oh, well, I can't have that now. But once you get into it, you find that there are so many options mm -hmm. um, and it gets fun to actually just try them out. Yeah, know, different things. it gets easier because you you then have your staples mm -hmm. too and it's, it's like you're not always having to put in that much work. Mm -hmm. um, you'll start knowing what is or isn't vegan on the shelf at your grocery store and you're able to, you know, build your own little staples of refrigerated items, canned goods, mm -hmm. dry goods, any of that. Right, yeah. So just like now when you go in the store and you grab, you know, what you're used to getting your familiar thing, you'll get to that point. So then you don't have to mm -hmm. think about it. It's not so er effortful. Another tip that I forgot to mention was that you can make this as expensive or mm -hmm. least expensive that you want. You do not have to eat extravagantly to get a good whole like well-rounded diet on whatever uh whether it be plant-based vegan vegetarian you don't mm -hmm. have to spend a lot of money buying the fake um you know vegan sausages mm -hmm. um you don't have to do that you don't have to spend like seven dollars for some vegan ice cream and you only get that much mm -hmm. you can make this as uh budget friendly um as you want and still be able to you know eat very well-rounded yeah definitely so there's the you know when you get into vegan meat substitutes um, they do tend to be a little pricey but if you're looking for vegan protein beans will do that yeah <laughs> beans are very cheap tofu and tempeh they tend to be very inexpensive mm -hmm. as well compared to the other um, meat substitutes yeah those are our tips for you that we have le learned thus far on our journey Okay, so now we're going to tell you about some of our favorite books and podcasts and documentaries and other sources uh, where you can learn uh, more about veganism or vegetarianism or plant-based life setup. Um, so to start, um, I would recommend the book Animal Liberation by Peter Singer, um, where he makes um, a case um, where he talks about, um, you know, our relationship uh, to animals. Um, and um, just explores that and, and I think it's, it's guided um, a lot of my now current philosophy um, mm -hmm. on our relationship um, with animals. So I'd recommend that. Um, I would recommend uh, blogs. Um, there are plenty of blogs, um, cooking blogs with uh, recipes because um, it can be hard to say like, well, what, what do we eat? What do I do? What substitutions can I make? Um, so some of the ones that I would recommend are the Vegan 8. Um, where she uses um, eight ingredients or less. Um, and then there's The Minimalist Vegan, um, where it's a kind of similar concept of keeping it um, minimal and simple. Um, so of course recipes can get super complex, but just keep it simple. Um, there's uh, It Doesn't Taste Like Chicken, um, where she focuses on more like comfort foods and um, lots of foods that uh, would be familiar to people, um, but she uh, veganizes them. And then uh, Sweet Potato Soul, um, where she has more of a, a focus on um, like soul food. Um, and we also have her book here at the library, um, as well as some other books um, focused on veganism and plant-based lifestyle. So be sure to um, check out our, our catalog and uh, check out some of these books. For my favorites, um, the book that I've been really, uh, I listened to it at the end of 2020. It was The Joyful Vegan, and um, I just learned so many things from Colleen, and I listened to it on audiobook, actually, because she is the one that's narrating it, and I just really, really like that, and she just covered so many 
topics in the book. I feel like you could listen to each chapter and it would be basically like listening to a podcast, which she actually does have two podcasts. Um, she has Food for Thought and Animology, I believe is the second one. That one is a little bit newer, but she has so much wisdom and she kind of helps to talk about in The Joyful Vegan, kind of combating that stereotype of it, vegans being angry mm -hmm. all the time. Um, so she, I feel like the, even if you've been vegan for years, I feel like it's still something that you could learn a lot from. And it was really, really encouraging too. Um, so those are some of my favorite books and podcasts for cookbooks. I really like Liv B's Vegan on a Budget. She actually has another book coming out here pretty soon. Um, I am always going to this cookbook. I feel like it just has a lot of staple dishes in it. Um, and then another one of my favorites is Rachel Ama's Vegan Eats. Um, she has a, a lot of creative recipes in here that are just so good. Um, she has a lot of Caribbean and West African um, dishes in here. It's just, it's seriously so good. So we also have this one. I don't think it's checked in right now, but you should definitely check it out once it's back on the shelf. Yeah, and we have the other one as well, the um, Vegan on a Budget. Yes, yeah, and so definitely check out our both of these authors, they have YouTube channels. YouTube is another great resource. Mm -hmm. When I first started being more curious about veganism, I found so many different YouTubers that I've uh, watched in the last couple of years. It's been really awesome seeing their journey. They post recipes and it's all free. Mm -hmm. um, they also usually have a blog that goes along with it. Uh, and a lot of them have different kind of eating styles from vegans that are gluten free to mm -hmm. oil free to raw vegans. Um, so definitely check out um, YouTube too. And I, as Brie was saying, check out like Pinterest, different blogs, things like that. Um, so those are some of our favorites. We'll also link in the description box some more that maybe we didn't mention. And um, also documentaries too. You can always go to Netflix and mm -hmm. they have a lot of documentaries on the subject. So, yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna talk to you about beauty and fashion items and resources around those. So the first one I wanna mention is the website Ethical Elephant. Um, she uh, has lots of lists of uh, vegan and cruelty-free items um, across a variety of categories. Um, everything from your basics of, you know, toothpaste and face wash to cleaning products and clothing. Um, I find her super helpful, so whenever um, I need to look for a new something um, I'll go to her website and just find the guide on it and there will be tons of uh, products and brands um, to choose from. Um, so I would uh, recommend um, her as a major resource and um, also just noting that you don't always have to go to a specialized store to get the, the vegan item. Um, you know, there's places like Sprouts right here in Cedar Hill, um, but also Target, mm -hmm. Aldi. Um, you can find things all over. Um, it ends up being more about just reading your um, your product labels. Yes. Uh, some of my uh, product specific uh, things that I really, really love, uh, Ella Mia, their mm -hmm. and nail polish brand. Also, Essie came out with a vegan mm -hmm. um, line of nail polishes, which is really, really awesome. And I think it says a lot too. A lot of your favorite brands whether it be clothing, beauty, they're starting to come out with more plant-based mm -hmm. vegan items too. So you yeah. don't have to give up, you know, um, some of your favorite things. Um, I know Urban Decay has a lot of vegan makeup products. Um, there's also Florence at uh, Ulta. Um, that's also another great skincare makeup line that is completely vegan and cruelty-free. Um, as far as clothing, making sure that your clothing items don't have any animal products. So saying no to leather, down, wool. Um, I know I run into that issue with cardigans. I love cardigans. Mm -hmm. um, so also some vegans, you know, I guess it just depends on how you feel about it. Some of them are okay with 
having secondhand goods that you know are that might have um, animal products in them. I guess it just it just I try and still stay away from them, but there are some vegans that uh, that they're fine with if they find a cardigan that's made of wool at the thrift store, then they'll buy it and they're fine with it. And um, I think that's you know that yeah. could be something too. Yeah, the idea there is that you're not directly, you know, supporting the, the industry and that, yeah. um, you know, and supporting our environment to, you know, getting stuff on second hand. Yeah, and I also want to say, too, you don't have to automatically toss out all mm -hmm. of the things that aren't vegan. Um, we also have a responsibility to make sure that we're not hurting our environment, too. So that goes if, you know, if I can't just throw out all of the things in my closet that aren't vegan yet you know i don't want it to end up in a landfill um so like Bree said once you run out of something then maybe say oh hey is there a vegan option out there for me um uh, and then going back to clothing i love uh a lot of different brands and a lot of them are coming out with vegan products um doc martens for instance they have some vegan boots um which i love uh uh, Birkenstocks. I love Birkenstocks <laughs> and they finally restocked on their vegan sandals. So um, yeah, just making sure that you are uh, not just boiling it down to the things that you eat, but also the things that you wear, the things that you're putting on your skin as well. Yeah, and again, that may be um, easier than, than you may think because um, some everyday things are already vegan, like Chuck Taylor. Yeah, vegan. yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to talk about restaurants. I think you and I both love to eat. Yes. So I'm excited about this one. <laughs> what are some of yours that you've been loving right now? Yeah. Um, so um, there is uh, It's So Vegan, um, which is uh, yeah, a local place in, in Grand Prairie um, where they have more, um, how to say, home style. Yeah. Or like soul food. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they're great. Um, Spiral Diner is a classic. Um, they have a couple of locations too. Yeah, in Dallas and Fort Worth and Denton. Yeah. Um, there is Peace Love Eats uh, in mm. DeSoto. Um, uh, it's a smoothie bar. Um, yeah, it's really good. It's really good. I think some of my favorites right now, uh, a lot of places too, it doesn't have to be uh, just vegan specific mm -hmm. um all of those ones that she mentioned there are um they are amazing and um they are specifically vegan restaurants uh i also really like chris and john's that one is a little bit of a hike if you live in cedar hill it's in north dallas um but it's a vietnamese and mexican fusion and they have a lot of vegan options which is amazing i love so my husband is actually not vegan um he eats more meat than anybody that I know. So it's awesome that we can still eat out places and there be uh, vegan options. So like India Grill um, in Arlington, they have some vegan options that are so good. Bon Me Station, I think I was going there weekly um, when I first discovered it and uh, they have some awesome vegan options. I'm trying to think of any, oh, Cinehal, oh, for desserts. Okay, I'm a big, I love desserts. I love sweets. I love baked goods. Um, Moonchild Bakery. They used to be operating as Sugar Fame Bakery, which was in Deep Ellub. Now she kind of operates out of her apartment, but she has amazing donuts, pop tarts, all of that. Oh. It's so good. That's also a little bit of a hike, but I promise it's totally worth it. And then there's Cineholic. They have cinnamon rolls. The whole uh, that one is a specifically vegan place. So there's it's all plant based, but it's uh, cinnamon rolls. They have really good brownies. Their toppings are out of this world. So uh, definitely check some of those out too. Also, um, I wanted to mention I didn't say this earlier, but Peta has really great resources on things that are accidentally vegan oreos oreos yeah <laughs> sour patch kids mm -hmm. some swedish fish you got to be careful with those ones some they're kind of hit or miss takis the purple the ones in the purple bag those are vegan 
Yeah, there's yeah. so many things that are accidentally vegan. So even if it doesn't have the label vegan, mm -hmm. just always be reading the uh, ingredient list. Right, right, definitely. Um, and I want to mention Happy Cow, um, oh. the website and the app. Uh, you can use it to find um, vegan restaurants or places with vegan options, um, just wherever you are. Um, yeah. So it's super helpful. And there are actually quite a few places, a lot of places in the DFW area, uh, once you just know um, how to look for them and how yeah. to find them. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there are, um, like Chelsea was saying, you know, specific vegan places, but um, then there are just kind of your everyday mm -hmm. places you're probably used to that that have um, vegan options. Even fast um, food places nowadays mm -hmm. are starting to branch out into that. Yeah, that yeah. World. So uh, places um, where I tend to go um, just in Cedar Hill or very nearby, um, Fuzzies, um, they have uh, you know veggie tacos and uh, enchiladas, um, and you can easily ask for some cheese to make it uh, vegan. Um, there's uh, Chaps and Red Robin. They mm -hmm. both have uh, veggie burgers. Um, King China has tofu, um, as well as uh, Moon Walk. Um, Panera. Panera, yes, Panera is great. Mm -hmm. McAllister's, you can get uh, Dunkin. veggie chili. And, yeah, Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin'. yeah. They have the, the yeah. it Beyond Sausage for the breakfast. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, uh, quite a few options. Um, again, I, I think that uh, when people start talking about, you know, like plant-based or vegan, um, people think about like, oh, I'm losing all this. I don't have options. Um, but really you do once you start to get into it and just know what to look for. Yeah. Also making sure if it's also hard to, if you, if you go out with friends, obviously we're in a pandemic, so maybe you're not eating out with friends as much, but, um, even before it was a little bit, you had to do more of your research. Like if a group of my friends wanted to go somewhere, um, maybe looking at the menu ahead just to pick out and see what it is that they have that you can eat or maybe even eating before and still going so that you're still having that you know social circle that you usually would um, food brings people together so you don't have to miss out on um, social outings just because of your of your uh, lifestyle yeah definitely don't be afraid to ask for substitutions yes you know, yeah you know, your regular hangouts. Yeah. And about this video we did put out on our Instagram and Facebook if you all had any questions about um, living this kind of lifestyle. And we did get two questions. So the first was, there is a misconception that veganism leads to malnutrition. Is that true? Here, you, what did you think about that? <laughs> Well, you can be malnourished on any diet if you're not eating a, uh, you know, balanced, well-rounded diet. But there is nothing inherent to veganism that makes yeah. it uh, unhealthy or that will leave you um, malnourished. Yeah, there are many misconceptions about veganism. I think that one is a, is a big one about uh, if we're getting enough nutrients. And um, there's so many ways that you can still get all of their vitamins whether it's not from necessarily something that you're eating but if you um, have talked to your doctor or nutritionist and they recommend some vitamins that are um, vegan friendly you could you could do that too i think just going back to what Bree said it's really all about are you eating a whole like well-rounded diet um Mm -hmm. And our next question that we got was, it was, um, she was asking, she is going to be giving up meat for Lent, but they also have a soy, tree nut, and dairy allergies to work around. I wasn't sure if it was all one person that had all three of those, or if it was just something like different people in the family that also have that, mm -hmm. um, but I think one of the best ways to answer it. Um, you know, we are not nutritionists or health experts, um, but maybe just going to your doctor or nutritionist and um, kind of hashing out those details and, and all of that. Yeah. But there um, are, it's definitely do, doable. I yeah, think. definitely. Just do your research and, you know, look for um, vegan, nut free alternatives or vegan, you know, whatever allergy you have. Um, to see what, what the alternatives are. 
um, because there there definitely are some. Um, yeah. So for example, if, if you because we recognize that a lot of vegan foods do um, the substitutes uh, pull from from foods that that you know many people are allergic to, such as nuts, you know, like all the nut milks. Um, but then there's oat milk. Um, so you know there's pretty much always some sort of um, alternative. Um, just have to do a little research. Yeah. Always read your labels. That's mm -hmm. a that's another big tip. Just read, read, read your labels. Yeah. All right, well, I think that's all, of, that was all the questions that we had. Um, Bree, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, I think we, we covered quite a bit. Yeah. So well, thank you all for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. There are so many topics that we covered that could easily, you can make separate videos covering all of those things. So hopefully you got some tidbits and tips that will help you on um, your journey, even if you are um, or maybe this video gave you a little bit of more insight on this lifestyle. Maybe you're not even interested in this lifestyle at all, but you've always kind of just been curious on what it's yeah. like. And um, or maybe you know someone, you know, a friend or a relative that's vegan or vegetarian. Um, uh, it is always great to learn about different people um, and you know how they live their life. So yeah. And again, come check us out at the library. We have books. Lots of resources. Yeah, documentaries and all sorts of resources here. So come see us. So, all right. Bye, everyone.